Hello and welcome to another video. I am currently in Almaty for Nauru's vacation and today I'm going to Tangbala to see the Sunmin petroglyphs. Now, I would say actually a lot of Cossacks have never been to this location and even when I asked them like, oh, um, have you heard of Tangbala? Are you, have you been there? They don't even know what I'm saying. Like last night I showed a friend a picture of where I was going and he was like, I've never seen it in my life. It's actually a UNESCO heritage site. So I feel like more people should know about it. They don't. And I'm going to show it to you today. Hopefully my friends and I, who I'm going with, we've also never been there, none of us. So hopefully we make it and hopefully this video sees the light of day. So let's go ahead and get on the road. Three hours later. And after a three hour drive, we're finally here at Tangbala. We parked and now we're walking down the trail areas and everything's nicely identified with these white stones, like the paths. There's signs around as well. And we come to the first major petroglyph site, which is right behind me there. Let's go see some animal figures and some anthropomorphic figures as well. Oh, there's one, the first one. Look at it. So let's talk a little history and culture here to give you some more information while we look at these amazing petroglyphs. In the whole of Tangbala Gorge, there are about 5,000 petroglyphs. And what's cool about them is that they span an incredibly long time, from like the 14th century BC to the Middle Ages, basically making this area a ritual or at least spiritual site for thousands of years. The petroglyphs are mostly of animal figures such as deer, goats, cattle, and my favorite, camels. But you can also see human figures. Are, we are posing for <laughs> sculpture. <laughs> and what the site is most famous for, sun men or quote unquote sun headed deities. They're not sure actually what, what they are, you know, it's in the past and it was all pictures instead of words, so it's not clear exactly if they're like gods or what, but these sun-headed beings are often used today in modern Kazakh graphic design, which is why I wanted to see the petroglyphs in the first place. What's also really neat is that you can get super close to the petroglyphs, like you can touch them if you wanted to. I know that's probably not good, but there's nobody around watching. Salamat's using the restroom right now. What's amazing is that the restrooms are actually good here. At the entrance, the restroom was clean, at least on the girls' side. Um, and there was toilet paper there. You have to pay for it, 50 tenge. But if you can hold it till this restroom, it's for free, but it's just a hole in the ground. But it's one of the best holes in the ground I've seen. It's clean, it's not nasty. Wouldn't you agree? I, I agree. It's something to definitely try. <laughs> well, in Kazakhstan, you know, you can't beggars can't be choosers with the type of restroom that you get out yeah. in the out in the nowhere lands. The entire UNESCO site is very large, and we're on what seems to be an endless path to who knows where. There's not like a map, but there are these white rocks that at least guide you to different parts. But um, there's no map at the front. Well, was there a map at the front? Anyways, there's no map at each turn. Yeah, at the entrance there was. Yeah, but just at the entrance. Yeah. After that, you just walk and follow different paths. Oh, there is two like the, uh, men like making love, you see? <laughs> two <laughs> two like, men making love? <laughs> like two human beings. You see? I do. Yeah. yeah. There were also burial sites, which was interesting to see because they all were like okay there was no dead bodies there but from the placard it said they all the bodies faced west or their head faced west i really wonder what was the religion or like the spiritual practice like back then the rules that govern burials and stuff like that
This place is so cool. I've never seen petroglyphs in real life and this is the first time. You can just, you would just see petroglyphs there. The path is well marked and before each section, there's these little plaques that tell you a bit of information about the area, how many, approximately how many petroglyphs are in that area. And I think Tambala is what Kazakhstan tourist sites could look like. I bet this place is like it is, like with labeled paths, plaques in many languages, clean restrooms, because it's a world, UNESCO World Heritage Site. Not only is it under the eyes of Kazakhstan and Kazakh people or Kazakh tourists, it potentially is under the eyes of the whole world. So th I bet that's why its facilities are like this and a very clean bathroom. <coughs> Three weeks later. Rocky from a little later in the timeline right now wants to add to my statement about the eyes of the world and kind of this UNESCO world site changing the way that Tangbala is treated and how the, how the site is upkept. I think that a lot of Kazakh nature tourist sites like Sharan, Kayanda, Kulsai aren't really kept up to amazing standards because there's not a tourist infrastructure. I've made comments about this in the past, but the tourist infrastructure in Kazakhstan could definitely be improved. Not saying that, oh my God, it's so bad, but Definitely, we can see from the evidence of Tangbala that if government funding is put in and also it's recognized as a major tourist site around the world, then the quality of that tourist site increases. This is my personal opinion. If Kazakhstan wants to increase their tourism, they need to make sure that their tourist sites are accessible. Like Tangbala, the road to it is very easy, available to get to by yourself or with a tour, and also that the facilities are welcoming. There were many picnic sites at Tangbala. Like I said, the restrooms were really good. The people at the front were helpful and they didn't try to scam us by making the price more expensive for foreigners. This is just my perspective as a foreigner who travels to these places. I'm not trying to bash any tourist sites or anything. I'm actually saying Tangbala is the best one I've been to, right? I also want to add some suggestions of if you're going to Tangbala. First of all, you should probably bring your own food and water. Upon doing my research after the fact, I found out that there is a museum and potentially a restaurant or something like a cafeteria probably in a building next door, but I didn't know about it. I'm not sure if the cafeteria will be running. There wasn't any cars outside of it. So I would say that if you see a menu, it might not have all the items that it says because it seems like nobody's there to kind of keep the demand up for the supply. So definitely bring your own water, bring your own food. There are places to sit with a little bit of shelter, but it's not a significant amount. So if you're going on a day that might be sunny, you need to bring sunscreen and comfortable shoes to walk in. Make sure that you look at the weather because it changes per season. And I would suggest that you don't go there during the middle of summer because it'll probably be hot. There's no trees or other cover to hide under. And that would be around the end of July and August. Also don't go in the winter time. Everything will be covered with snow. So probably starting from March till June, maybe May, May, June, and then again from September and October, those times might be okay for you to go as a tourist if you're thinking about it yourself. The entry was 500 tenge per person, affordable. You just have to pay for the gas to get there and also the food that you're gonna bring. They have these pavilions where you can sit and eat. So that's convenient as well. And if the restrooms aren't working, they also have other porta potties and also as you saw in the video, a place to use the restroom within the site as well. But overall, I think the experience going to Tangbala was really great. Like it's a good place to learn a little bit more about um, Central Asian nomadic history. And going to Tangbala is like the first step, a good introduction into ancient Central Asian culture and history. A good day trip, if you will. I also wanna plug my other travel videos. I have been to almost every site to go to in the Almaty region by now. Sharan, Kayanda, Kulsai, um, the Singing Dunes, Barhan, um, and here. And all of those places have videos on my 
channel. So go ahead and check them out in my Kazakhstan travel playlist. You can also see where else I've been in Kazakhstan and you could learn a little bit about Astana where I live as well. And that's the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one. Ah, uh, bye-bye.